Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm Zorin, I can finally get my life back, Gavoyich, because today we finish off the Tremors franchise with the seventh and seemingly final film, Tremors Shrieker Island, released in 2020. Originally titled Tremors Island Fury, this entry has the honor of being my least favorite in the franchise. While I'm grateful they didn't film Sand for Snow, I'm upset because it's really just more of the same. You can't just, uh, you know, put the same food on the table, you know, you gotta have a variety. Lies! Whereas the last film gave us a practical graboid, a more toned down Travis, and some memorable one liners. Take a couple of tablespoons of cement and harden the hell up, huh? This film has none of those things. Travis is out. I still have no idea why Jamie Kennedy didn't return, but the film seems like it was still written for him and then changed to some random dude last minute. That random dude in question is Jimmy, played by John Heater, who does the best he can with the script he got. And that script this time was written by director Don Michael Paul, who I guess wanted two paychecks this time around. As its reality show inspired title suggests, this Tremors brings back the Shriekers that have been absent since part three. But there's no real explanation for their return, and no one seems to care. I mean, the last movie at least tried to give Bert some depth by, you know, facing his own mortality and further bonding with his estranged son. But this movie's attempted emotional core rings hollow, especially with no Travis. Never thought I'd actually miss Travis. Yep, that's how much I don't like this movie. I will say the addition of Richard Brake as a scenery-chewing biotech mogul slash big game hunter is fun, but the rest of the characters are pretty one note, including these two that are there the whole time but have like no lines. Seriously, watch for them. Michael Gross's Burt is a treat to watch as always, probably because he himself actually rewrites most of his own Burt lines. And I don't want to get Burt wrong. So I refine him and refine him and refine him and keep doing different drafts. But you know you've got a problem when your fake promo ads for Burt Gummer's presidential campaign are more entertaining than your actual movie. Politicians are, for the most part, a group of abject, craven, opportunistic, mentally challenged invertebrates. I mean, no disrespect. Yeah, Michael Gross wrote most of those himself, and I gotta give him credit for going the extra mile. I like it. So who's gonna be the first Grab Bachelor to be voted off Shrieker Island? Let's find out and get to the kills. The movie begins on the Singer castle Dark Island, filmed in Thailand this time. I have an entire bag here of sunblock and insect repellent. I'm going to Thailand. A park orphan does some Ezio-style acrobatics as he tries to stay one jump ahead of a graboid before he enters a field watched by the local NRA chapter. And when the graboid comes a calling on some cans, this fella tells them to activate the poison darts that look like pee. <laughs> this time I'm ready for pee jokes. The Graboid leaps from the ground before it can even finish rendering. Seriously, I, I can't find the ascent. And much like myself, this boy is unimpressed by the movie so far. So he runs off to find a title card. Shrieker Island, Mondays on Fox. Oop, looks like the Graboid got away. But don't worry, we've got a recognizable actor here. We're gonna bag this old baby tomorrow. That's Bill, played by Richard Bray, who was previously seen on the kill count in Three From Hell, Mandy, and as a man whose mouth was desperately in need of some soap in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Fuck! 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 Fuck. Bill and this Nandy cosplayer, Anna, are providing some graboid hunts for wealthy Silicon Valley hipsters. And these ain't no regular GBs either. Their genetic code has been tinkered with by this man, Dr. Richards. Can I call you Dr. Dick for short? No? Cool. On a nearby island, we find the Avex Bio Wildlife Preservation. It's far away from a lot of places, but missing a sign for the most important one. Anyone seen the Bixby guy? S.S. Wilson, he's the only one that understood Bixby! The research facility is run by Jasmine and this hungover guy named Jimmy, even though he doesn't have any skills. God. Jasmine grabs not Travis and takes a jungle cruise to Dark Island to see what Bill's up to. It leads her to a graboid crime scene. Okay, no one contaminate the evidence. <laughs> Damn it, rookie! Jasmine figures out this big pile of dirt is actually a graboid on a budget, and these three cheap garbage bag sacks have given birth to Shriekers. It's our first graboid kill of the movie, and this carcass makes me pine for the folks at Amalgamated Dynamics. I miss you, Alec and Tom. Jasmine mentions the graboid has an exoskeleton, which is just wrong, considering we saw a very internal skeleton in Tremors 5. Like I said, no one seems to care. But screw it! Let's just chase everyone through the jungle, including a guy named Ishiman, who stops for a foggy, 
kind of reveal of our redesigned Shrieker. He's tackled off screen, leaving only a hat, but I'm sure Juan will be by to pick that up. Ishimon then returns to say, he's not dead yet, he feels happy. That is until he's pulled off screen again and eaten, giving his attackers a bloody new lipstick shade. Ishimon, lipstick for Shrieker. His death is mourned with many a drooly face, and Jasmine knows there's only one man who can help them now. I need you to find Burt Gummer for me, Jimmy. Why not Travis? Because Jamie Kennedy isn't in this movie for unexplained reasons, which we'll write off in a single line. Travis is in a Mexican jail. Don't ask. That means you're the new Travis, you friggin' idiot. So go find the old Bert. And look as much like Travis as you can while doing it. Writing doesn't even try to pretend like this wasn't meant to be Travis. Jimmy arrives in Papua New Guinea, which looks suspiciously like the island we were just on, and initiates his brilliant plan to find Bert. Mr. Gummer! Yep, shouting. Well, it works, and Jimmy finds a retired Raiden. Whoop, sorry, our buddy boy Bert. Now with a great big bushy beard. That Michael Gross grew himself for five months to avoid prosthetics and glue in the South Pacific heat. And my dear wife, my dear patient wife, had to get up and look at me every morning looking like that. After eating an actual live grub that Michael Gross wasn't fully comfortable doing. That was the first time I'd eaten a live thing. I didn't want to eat too many because I didn't. I don't like killing on camera. We learned that Bert fled Nevada when big government told him to install a sewer at his property. You know what that means. Bureaucracy. It's one big self-licking ice cream cone. Well, I bet that ice cream cone never leaves the house. Because <laughs> it licks itself. <laughs> Come on, man. Your nephew watches this show. Okay. Doesn't take long for this bench warmer to convince Bert that this franchise can't survive without him. So let's go on and get out of here. No, man, you got it all wrong. It's go on and get. Go on and get. <laughs> no, it's, it's go on and get. Go on and get. That's the Zoran touch right there. Anyway, he goes on and leaves his coconut bowling shop in the hands of his woodwife, Treba McIntimber. Back on Dark Island, Bill admits to Jasmine that he's bred and modified Graboids like they were an Indominus Rex, since that's what the Universal execs asked him to do. Luckily, there's only three left. And when Jasmine demands they shut down the hunt, Bill goes full B-movie villain. You should know I jammed the comms grid for the weekend. No one ruins my hunt. Well, the only response is to blow 50 grand of the budget on Balvin Scotch and bring all the pee jokes. This faux Negan takes out his little Lucille and relieves himself while simultaneously refilling the tank. But peeing outside can be scary when there's pygmy mummies in the jungle shaking bushes. So he hides in an outhouse he must have decided against earlier and is attacked by Demon's girlfriend until he's eventually sucked into the porta potty by maybe a shrieker, graboid, or a ghoulie. It's not really clear. But this Angela approved death ends in the basement with an all Awful mess down there. And now it's time for this movie's favorite pastime, boating. Look at those boats, look at those boats. Look at all those boats going by. One of them has Bert, who presumably remained shirtless on the plane ride over. Well, he looks great for 74. You got it, flaunt it. Jasmine greets Bert with an observation no tune can ignore. It looks like someone needs a shave and a haircut. Ooh, why so familiar? Oh, maybe that's because you're Travis's mother. Though you can call her... Dr. Welker, whichever you prefer. Accent's a bit muddled there, unlike Bert's tan. Bert wants nothing to do with his hippie hookup from the past, but is mildly cajoling to stay in the movie with the promise of not talking about their illegitimate son, Travis. Works for me! The research team gathers to watch Tremors 5 to get up to speed on Graboid lore. Seriously, you're just playing your first movie again, Don Michael Paul? This guy can't be for real. Yep, apparently he is that lazy. Also, that's your only line. But you know, we'll keep you and this guy around throughout the movie for no reason. As Bert shaves the day, we hear more details about Travis's jail stint. He's behind bars for bringing magic mushrooms across the Mexican border. Oh, good. I was worried it'd be related to what he said at the end of Tremors 5. I've been accused of being a ninja photographer and hating on hot 22-year-olds. I'm guilty on all accounts. Bill arrives to pay his fellow Graboid hunter a visit. Or maybe he was just excited to have another actor on his level in this movie. Bert tries to tell Bill to stop copying Jurassic Park, but Bill assures him that his teenage mutant kinda Graboids can't escape Dark Island. Alcatraz for Graboids? Now that's a Tremors 8 pitch I can get behind. As though Graboid Daddy Billy isn't bad enough for Bert, he also learns this place is gummer hell. We're, we're, we're completely gun-less. 
Ooh, almost had a line there. Better luck next time. Jimmy and another researcher named Freddy, played by Jackie Cruz, show Bert what they do have at an old bomb shelter. Let's see, we got some knives, machetes, a freaking flamethrower. Oh, and some crates have been properly stored Napoleon Dynamite that you, you know, might want to be careful with. Dynamite improperly stored sweats its main ingredient, nitroglycerin. Yeah, which causes it to be highly, and I mean highly unstable. Yeah, just ask Arts about that. Oh, speaking of Lost, Nikki, Paolo, anything to add? No? Cool. Glad you're here. Freddy suggests they rig the dynamite as a graboid deterrent slash warning system, already proving to be a much more interesting gummer protege than Jimmy Bahama. I'm not some tree-hugging vegan chick. Wonder what Travis would have said to that. Yeah, well, I got some wood you can hug. <laughs> oh, God! Get it off! Get it off! Bert packs up the flamethrower, and Jimmy drops his blade of glory while asking Bert about his relationship with Jasmine. I don't get women. Too many moving parts. I can take part and reassemble an AK-47 blindfolded, but women I always want to talk about stuff. Bert's 80s stand-up material is paused when Freddy returns from her Fortnite locker to show him her new birdie back bling that doubles as a graboid alarm. Bert borrows some shades from Jasmine, which should help protect his eyes over on Dark Island from the blue-green Picaco vision. The hunters try and recapture the magic of Predator by endlessly walking through the jungle, but minus the epic music. <laughs> Predator stealing doesn't stop there either, as the Shriekers keep an eye on them and steal sound design. Yep, sounds just like Predator. But you're right, let's not make a graboid out of a molehill, as Bert questions why there are Shriekers after they no-showed the last two films. Hey, I'm wondering that myself. But instead of an explanation, we get a kill! When one of them tackles and off-screen eats a bro named Wall Street. No idea how they didn't hear that, but it looks like money does sleep. FOREVER. The group's selective hearing comes back when they hear the Shriekers using their indoor voices. What the hell is that? Bioacoustics. Uh, actually, Shriekers are deaf, according to Tremors 2. The noise doesn't matter, it's the heat they emit when they're screaming that actually signals the pack. Get your shit together. Anna notices that Wall Street is gone, so Bill quotes his favorite line from the previous film. They're gonna piss like a puppy, you better stay on the porch. <laughs> A man's dead. The Shriekers somehow zoom their predator vision before revealing themselves with a casual stroll. And there's no behind the scenes info on their new design, so I can't tell you why they look like voodoo priests with black tape over their nose nipples. They've leveled up their skill tree since Tremors 3, and their screams can now change frame rates and cause everyone to collapse in pain, as though they had just finished reading the script for the first time. Bert and the gang hear the screams and head towards them. Full boobs ahead! Shut up. Oh, sorry, Mr. Gummer. The Shriekers pick off our no-name cast, including Richie McGlasses, who slams into a tree that completely fell apart behind the scenes. Oh! He's then killed off screen, as is Mr. Rando Camo Pants, while Hattie Lundgren is tackled into a strawberry jelly jar. Well, at least the Predators still got great. Then Mangeef the Body Gunshura lets loose with his minigun, taking out two Shriekers before a third one screams him to the ground. The final two go in for the kill, but are engulfed by a wall of fucking flames! That's right, Bert and Jimmy are here with some badass slow-mo fire shots that the Shriekers shake off to avoid getting added to Bert's log. But not before Freddy tags one with a tracker dart for use in the third act. Everyone regroups, and we get a lame explanation as to this new supersonic Shrieker power. Behavioral mutation. Yeah, more like behavioral laziness, which is in full force when another Graboid arrives to kill Minigun Mike with yet another sucked into the ground off-screen kill. Time to Amscray, so Bert tosses his flamethrower as a distraction, and Anna shoots it just in time to blow up Graboid number two, raining slow-mo supersaturated guts all over everyone, including Bert and his business hit. They all ride out on their respective boats, 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 boats! And at camp, Jasmine's wobbly accent explains they've lost a geotagged elephant below the surface. One of those graboids got off Dark Island and made its way over here. And ate an 11,000 pound elephant. Oh, looks like we got a situation. A swimmy queen graboid situation. You know what? No! You don't deserve this running joke, Tremor 7. Bad movie. Bad. Bert once again asks Bill to end the Graboid hunt, but he refuses and makes sure no franchise mainstay is gonna get in his way. See, this is the trouble with not having guns. Bert is darted and locked up in the bunker with the rest of our featured extras. Hello! 
The hunt continues, but scientist Magoo is having doubts about locking Bert up. You know, there's actually a Bert gamma day. I did know that. April 14th, started by baby Fark McGee Zacks of Imager in 2017. Did you know you can't celebrate without the traditional MREs and Graboids? So, you know, wear worms. <laughs> They're worms! Prompting them to fire every bullet ever. Well, guess it didn't work so good since another nobody has the honor of being our like one million sucked off screen death. Yay. Even the doc can't take the lack of imagination in these kills. So he runs off to find his agent. He then trips over his own stupidity and gets up to see a fun shot of the Graboid Queen, lit solely by flares. And what's with the hair tufts? Looks like my grandpa's ears. Well, the queen doesn't like to get her hands dirty, so another Graboid comes in and finishes off the doc in a blur of dirt and debris. Good bio mutation to you, doc. Anna is done with Bull's Bill shit, or the reverse of that. So after she hands in her gun for being in a loose cannon, she heads to the bunker to free Bert and the others. She convinces Bert to let her join them in fighting Queen Graptifa. But one of the killer queen's fat bottom graboids has found them. They shut down the generator that was attracting the graboid and dive into a Tremors mainstay planning scene, lit by phone light. After planting dynamite along the wall of the bunker, they turn the Jenny back on. Bert tosses his dynamite like Snidely Whiplash. <laughs> It's a ridiculous face. And the resulting explosion gives us an excuse for more slow-mo and lowers the graboid count to one. Don't forget about the shriekers. Is what I said in the last two movies, but no one listened to me. The next day, this man referred to only as Bowtie expresses his thoughts after continuing to read this script. This is madness, Bill. Yes, it is. Oh, relax, man. I thought bow ties were cool. Oh, and Richard, I absolutely love your commitment to the insanity. Ah! I love it! Back at the research center, they've installed an explosive perimeter fence that, according to Jimmy, will totally frag the Graboid's asses. Don't say things like frag their friggin' asses. Bert Gummer can pull off that stuff, but it's not a good look on you. Well, not like, say, a bow tie, which makes me wonder how things are going over at Bill's camp. Yep, that's an actual cut in this movie. Right into the middle of an attack as if they accidentally deleted an entire scene. Well, with that, Bill fires the editor, oh, sorry, a pistol, while Bert Shamrock shuffles through the jungle, arriving as Bowtie is killed by, you fucking guessed it, getting sucked away off screen. This time with a grabber tentacle on his head, but no one's vibro laughing here. Bert tries to convince Bill to turn the comms back on, but Bill's gone full Ahab and will not give up. Yep, looks like it's time to kill Bill, as volumes one and two of the grabbers yank him through the bridge, until finally, oh no! Mr. Bill is killed off screen. Oh, these deaths, you know, it just really Richard breaks my heart. No budget, run out of ideas, or just really fucking lazy? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you should try off-screen deaths. It's the easiest way to up your movie's body count without having to be clever by coming up with original ideas. Plus, those large kill numbers can help out lowly internet shows that rely on your copyrighted material for their income. Off-screen deaths. What you don't see can kill ya. According to Bert, Bill's death wasn't about food. It was personal. She's culling the weakest from the herd first. Oh crap, that means I'm next. Okay, stole a chuckle from me on that one. But I won't let it happen again. The plan is to kill off the Shriekers. Over on Shrieker Island. But before heading out, Bert gets his part six Jason cosplay on. And Jasmine apologizes to Bert for hiding Travis from him and the viewers of this movie. She didn't want to trap Bert into a life she knew he didn't want. And he understands in his own Bert way. We do the best we can with what we got. You know, it's a nice little acting moment for Michael Gross as Bert considers the life he could have had with Jasmine and their son, Travis. Let's go, son! <laughs> no, Bert, Travis is your son, not Jimmy. <laughs> oh, boy. Bert and Jimmy head into this monster house and borrow more bits from Predator. Put mud on me like Arnold did in Predator. Whoa, 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 careful, movie. You're almost at babysitter levels of Gen X dude references. Thought we were going Rambo. You go Rambo. I've got the chainsaw, I'm going evil dead. Holy shit, you've managed to surpass it. They pop in some noise-canceling Raycons and begin their Shrieker slaughter. Or they attempt to, at least, as Jimmy eats dirt and is venom-licked by a Shrieker. This rejected Resident Evil design is eventually chainsawed to death, spraying nice practical goo on Jimmy, as well as Bert, who hacks at and kills an off-screen Shrieker with his dual machetes. Meanwhile, Jimmy's been watching you, Shrieker. You're just Jimmy's type. So Jimmy goes full me on it, with a chainsaw blowjob, which is intercut with 
with Bert getting hot and heavy with four shriekers of his own. One of them tries to get away, but he takes it out when his small arm fires this nice hand-to-hand -hand technique. Who needs guns when you got Pennsylvania steel? At the research facility, make way for the queen as she sets off the perimeter traps, sending her into the fire while the rest go higher and higher. When Bert and Jimmy return, they learn that they're right on top of the queen and Bert believes it's his destiny to fight this worm god. Destiny's a bitch. Yeah, especially if you're a free-to-play player. Bert uses this Jamba Juice order of a map to plan a final showdown at the Devil's Punch Bowl. Jazz says Bert doesn't have to do this and is worried about her inheritance if Bert dies. 3,000 MREs and enough munitions to blow the state of Nevada to kingdom come. And you get these sunglasses back. Aw, it's so considerate of the Graboid Queen to let Bert have these moments with his ex-lover and son. Damn it, not son! This scene means nothing! He sends them off to safety and he proves he's still cool as ice by slowing the motion as the Graboid sets off the perimeter charges. It follows Bert right through Marjorie the Trash Heap, so he grabs a horse and Red Dead Redemptions his way through the jungle until he reaches the gorgeous view above the Devil's Punch Bowl, which has now been spiked with thousand proof dynamite. Jimmy joins Bert for no reason as the Queen takes her sweet ass time getting up the cliff. Bert still wants to go it alone, but Jimmy won't leave. Well, only one way to make a decision in a Tremors movie. Rock, paper, fist bump. Okay, well, I guess the plan is to get the Graboid to charge them and then jump away at the last second, forcing the Graboid to soullessly reenact the ending of the first film? Sure. That yeah, looks like it's time for their appointment with Dr. Worm. So Bert uses a gratuitous amount of slow-mo to entice it before putting his foot down on this franchise. The Queen charges and Bert and Jimmy very slowly run towards the cliff's edge. And since Bert knows there's no reason for Jimmy to be here. He says, get away from him, you bitch, and gives this early worm the bird before he's fucking eaten. Are you kidding me? Did you just kill Bert? No, 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 no. That's not possible. I mean, he's been gulped by a graboid before. He's just a little eaten. He's still good. He's still good. But the queen ain't as she's both skewered and blown up by Freddy, who believes orange is the new snack and serves up the graboid goop to a very hungry Anna. Everyone celebrates the victory and rushes up to join Jimmy on the cliff, but the celebration stops when they see Bert's hat and the kill count graphic verifying that yes, Bert Gummer, the star of seven films and 13 episodes of a TV show is dead. Eaten by a graboid, then blown up, all while saving a character that wasn't even his son that had no reason to be with him in the first place. Seriously, this decision pissed me off so much that I couldn't even sleep all night. Ugh. Mm -hmm. He wasn't this upset when my grandpa died. Bert was my grandpa. Yes, he was. Also, how did his glasses survive and end up on the top of the cliff? We saw them get eaten along with his hat. Who earns? And to add insult to literal injury, Michael Gross tore his rotator cuff doing that jump, thus continuing a tradition in these new films of injuries that started with bruised ribs in part five and a chipped tooth in part six. And subsequently it meant that Michael Gross was on painkillers for most of this film. That man is a goddamn professional, huh? As for this ending, they did film it two ways, with Bert coming back, but Universal, potentially wanting to reboot the series without Bert, decided to end the movie this way without his return. But I can't give up all hope, as we never did see a body, and Michael Gross himself hasn't fully ruled out a Bert return. Maybe he fights the next fight in a motorized wheelchair, you know, with rocket-propelled grenades on the side. Anyway, this collection of people that means nothing to Bert or the audience, including the no-line nobodies, do a great job of being sad, as they set up a makeshift grave for our hero. They leave meaningless trinkets on Bert's grave and the final honor of placing his hat goes to this guy, who knew him for what? Like 48 hours tops? As I've suddenly hinted at, I'm not the biggest fan of Travis, but at least if this were his son, there would be some resonance to this funeral scene. Instead, we get nothing, as the movie ends with a shot of Bert's grave and a credit letting you know who to direct your anger at. During the credits, we do get a nice in remembrance montage set to John Alexander's hollowed ground with optical flowed slow motion shots from across the franchise. And it all ultimately ends on a reminder card telling us to celebrate Bert Gummer Day on April 14th. Also, it tells you to pay taxes, cause you know, Bert loved to pay taxes. Not like that was a plot point of the last movie or anything. How many people were killed when, you know what? I'm so pissed off right now, I can't even do a pun. Ugh, come back, Bert, come back. Hey, Zorn, it's me, Bert Goober. I'm not dead. You're not Bert, you're dead meat assistant, Ben.
N no, I'm Bert. Uh, critical need to know penetration and whatnot. Ew, that's not even the line. You know what? I'm too depressed to do the numbers. I'm gonna go take a nap. I cannot believe that worked. Hi, welcome to the Kill Count. My name's Ben Bellevue, and today we're talking about Star Wars The Last Jedi. No! <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, well, uh, 12 people dying, Tremor Shrieker Island. All men, closing out the franchise with a chart as blue as, you know, I feel right now. With a runtime of 103 minutes, that gave us a kill on average every 8.6 minutes. Bert's hunting log adds three mutated graboids, nine shriekers, and one fuzzy eared queen graboid, giving us a super screamy, wormy kill every 7.9 minutes. And that leads to our first time ever franchise totals. The Graboids, in all their forms, were able to kill and or eat 62 people. 55 men, 5 women, and 2 unknown. But that is nothing compared to the 198 Graboid Shriekers, Ass Blasters, Dirt Dragons, and Grabbers that Bert and his buddies were able to add to the hunting log, proving that Bert is the true Mix Master. <laughs> you okay down there, Ben? Cool. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to nobody. Sure, Bird is an important kill, but it's so meaningless and aggravating, I will not reward it. Del Machete for lamest mm. kill will go to all the other kills in this film. Every one of them had people getting sucked off screen. And that just sounds really dirty. Can we say that? I've said worse. Bert's hunting trophy goes to the Shriekers engulfed by Bert's flamethrower, since it'll look great on Michael Gross's reel while he looks for a new job. And that's it. Tremor Shrieker Island came out in 2020 and is the latest and possibly final film in the franchise. Unless, of course, the Bert Gummer for President ads are to be believed. But a new battleground lies ahead. Space. Honestly, it's been an amazing ride being the first guest host of The Kill Count. And if your comments keep showing the love like they have been, Maybe I'll return someday to count some non-Precambrian kills. But until then, I'm Zorin, I have a piece of a Graboid signed by SS Wilson Gavoyich, and I can only think of one way to end this franchise that I can't believe no one else has done. Enjoy. We've been covering this franchise for a million years. And I bet that our subscriber counts lost a million more. But we finally made it to the end of this film series. But we, we lost, lost the, the only, only man, man who's been, been at its core. What will we do, meaties, without Bert? What will we do, meaties, without Bert? And we're still not committing the TV show Ooh, What will we do, do meetings without Bird Sha la 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 We did it! We made it through seven Tremors movies! Yes! Thank you so much, James! This has been Oh, so long. It's been a very long time, but it's been a lot of fun. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. You know, we can't be done with Tremors just yet because Burt Gummer Day is next week on April 14th. And so I've got something very special planned for the channel. I'm not gonna tell James about it. I'm just gonna post it. No, it doesn't work like that. I know all about it. Also, man, I am so curious to hear your thoughts about covering the Kill Count. And I'm sure many of those people are too. So we're gonna have a live stream discussion on Saturday the 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern. 5 p.m. Pacific, where we're just going to talk about how it was for you to take on that mantle. And you introduce some fun stuff to the series, like the fake ads, might keep those going, and uh, the cameos from the Dead Meat team, I love showing them off to the audience. And I love that I was able to get every single member as a cameo in these Tremors kill Oh, not every member's on, but I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, what time is it? Oh, I need to post a new TikTok. Okay. Uh, be good people.